So according to Robbie, remember that number that group theory has been secretly encoded in our course. I will show you right now. So remember, we looked at things that are relatively prime. The greatest common divisor of x comma y equals one. Let's say x comma n. So consider all elements relatively prime to n. For example, if n equals five. 1 is relatively prime to 5, 2, 3, and 4. Or, if n equals 6, it will be 1 uh, and 5. Yeah. So there you go. So consider all elements relatively prime. So, remember Bayesian's identity. So I claim that under the multiplication mod n, we have a group. So remember Bayesian's identity, right? Uh, a x plus b y equals g c d of x comma y, right? Let's consider the case. So just simply take okay. From this identity, take. I'm sorry. Why should I make n? Take mod n from both sides. This this appears. And let's say GCD of x comma n equals one. That means we have an A, such as AX equals one. Remember, x is relatively prime. We have an inverse. Inverse is A. Let me give you a real example. This whole idea of the group, or what we call it relatively prime group, R n. So let's say R five. So far, R five equals. 1, 2, 3, and 4. We know from base of identity using this ax plus b times 5 equals 1. Take a mod of 5 both sides and you'll get ax equals 1. So we always, and this is all mod 5. There you go. Oh, sorry. Mod n. So we always have an uh, inverse, and that is the x, and that is the a, inverse of every x. Therefore, our n, comma, multiplication, mod n, is a group, and we will come back to this. When we talk about Lagrange's theorem, because we will derive Euler's theorem from this. Very cool. Another way for Euler's theorem. I did it what I did with pigs, duck, and, uh, and pandas. Something different. Cool proof. I like it. Okay. Just like Daniel Liv. Daniel Liv, he proved Euler's theorem using the Stirling's triangle. This is another proof. Many, many paths to Rome. Many paths. Another type of group we'll be dealing with, dihedral group, which is uh, order n. So dihedral, so a dihedral group. Of order n. We simply look at a, a um, n-gon. So for example, this is a four-gon. We give them all numbers. And we rotate it by 2 pi over n. We rotate it four times, we get identity. So it's going to first be collection of rotations. R, R2, R3, rotating three times, square, rotating twice, three times. E, identity, beginning at the beginning. We also have something called line of symmetry. I make a line of symmetry. And uh, every time I I can flip it around the line of symmetry. We cannot see it very well. So I flip it, and the, the two and four switches. I flip it again, it switch back. I can rotate it and then switch it, and something like. Rotate it once, 
one, two, three, four, and then I switch it. One, two. So I call this the S. We call this switching around the axis of symmetry S. Uh, switching it twice gives you S squared equals E. But notice that when after you switch it, all of them are different when you do rotation. So S R, S R squared, S R cubed, all axes are all different. We call this the hedro group of order four. So we're going to generalize this action of switching across an axis of symmetry and for any n gon. And we call this dihedral group of order n. So definition is dn equals the set e r squared r1 r r squared up to rn. And also s s r s r squared up to s n r n minus 1 and this should be r n minus 1 by the way we just can make mistakes as long as we succeed in the mission and it has to satisfy r n times r n well actually that's any element that's any any thing does that it has to satisfy r to the n equals e and s squared equals e Good. Next thing, so this is the hedral group of order, of order n. You read about this, I believe, in chapter 4. So I'll prove you two, from, so from the definition of groups, I'll prove you two really quick properties. I also assign you some other properties. Uh, by the way, I forgot to say that groups do not, even though they need to be commutative, uh, associative, they need not be commutative. Commutative groups you call abelian groups. Abelian for able, the guy not being able. So means that x star y equals y star x for any x and y. So addition in the reals is abelian. Division, you know, that's a form group. Uh, dihedral group, Rs, does not equal Sr for groups of order n, maybe n greater than 3. Greater than 2. So, remember, rotating it. Let's say, look at 4. Rotating it. 1, 2, 3, 4. And flipping across. So, this becomes rotate. 1, 2, 3, 4. Flipping. 1, 3. It's not the same as saying, I flip first. So this becomes, so rotate it and then flip, uh, flip, One, two. this is now 4, 2, and then you rotate, notice, not the same, I wish that case comes out, but uh, ask me questions. Not the same. Let's see if I can now get the last two theorems. So I two approve two really quick properties of proof. I have a one minute and twenty seconds. Let's see how I can do it. One is identity is unique. Suppose there's two identities, E and E1, E2. E Therefore, E1 equals E1 times E2 by definition identity equals uh, E2 by definition identity. Therefore, E1 equals E2. Identities are unique. Secondly, inverses are unique because suppose uh, we have two inverses y and x by the inverse of z. Therefore y equals uh, is, let's see so z so e equals y z equals equals uh, x z so we have equals e. So we have yz equals xz. Multiply both sides by inverse again. And this will give us y equals x. OK, I think we're 13 seconds. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the end of lecture. And we will continue next time with subgroups and generators. Anyways, Math Ninja out.